So now we're going to look at using WebStorm as our IDE. And one of the strong arguments in favor of WebStorm, as I mentioned in the last video, is the company that makes WebStorm. You can see this here, JetBrains. They're the same company that makes IntelliJ. That's for writing code in Java. And uh, IntelliJ is the platform upon which Google built Android Studio. So if you learn how to use WebStorm, you've got some familiarity with how Android Studio works. And uh, that's why we uh, use WebStorm and I use it because at the college where I work, we also teach Android programming. And it just makes it easier for the students to switch from, oh, I, I know WebStorm, now I totally understand Android Studio. There's a lot of transferability. So that's one of the strong arguments in favor of WebStorm. One of the arguments against WebStorm is that it costs money. <laughs> so if you just like look for WebStorm, uh, 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 WebStorm pricing, there we go, WebStorm price, and uh, check it out. They sell you subscriptions, and for an individual, it's about 59 bucks a year. However, if you are a student, you could get it for free. If you're a startup, and who the heck can it just claim to be a startup? <laughs> it's 50% off. So really, that's only about, I don't know, 30 bucks a year, and it becomes less the longer you use it. So 20 bucks a year, right? Like after the third year, not too bad. So those are those are good arguments in faith. Uh, well, you know, it's not too pricey, but some people that's a little bit of a hurdle. So if you don't want to use WebStorm, then you don't need to watch the rest of this video because I'm just going to show you how to set up WebStorm. Or maybe you're curious, do I want WebStorm or do I want Atom? Then you can watch this video and you're going to see WebStorm and one of my favorite features, live preview. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download WebStorm. You'll download it and then you'll run the program to install it. It'll be different if you're on Mac or on Windows. If it asks you to associate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files with WebStorm, the holy trinity of web programming, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, if it says, hey, do you want to associate those files with WebStorm? It's basically saying, do you want WebStorm to open these files anytime you click one? So you want to check that and make sure that, yes, WebStorm is going to be my IDE for doing web stuff. Associate HTML, CSS, JavaScript files with WebStorm. Once WebStorm is downloaded and installed, you want to start it. In Windows, you could just go right here and type in WebStorm and then hit Enter. If you're on a Mac, you'll want to launch the Spotlight, and you can do that by holding down Command Spacebar and then searching the same way. That's kind of cool. So the first time you come in here, we want to make some setting changes. And so one of the setting changes is we're going to go to Configure, and we are going to go to Plugins. And so when you first start WebStorm, all of these plugins are checked. You do not want all these plugins checked because you're not going to use all this stuff. So there's no, no reason, no need to have that stuff running in the background. That's just going to create increase the overhead for the program and make it run slower. And so uh, uncheck everything we don't need. You just need CSS support. You need file watchers because we're going to do live preview. You need Git and GitHub and HTML tools. Uh, and you need all the JavaScript stuff just in case we do any of that. And then... <clears throat> <coughs> live edit, you want that because we're going to do live editing and task management and the terminal and W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, validators. You want all that stuff. So just get those check marks and voila, waha, you're ready to go. Uh, you can also browse repositories to find other plugins. As you continue learning about web development with me, you will learn the Go programming language, at which point we'll come in here and we'll get a plug-in to use the Go programming language, the best language in the entire world. Go is awesome. So now that we have that configured, hold on. <laughs> we need to go into, uh, the next thing is we want to set up the, the font and the theme. So we could have different color themes. And so you could search for WebStorm color themes. And uh, WebStorm, WebStorm color themes. And then there's this website, colorthemes.com, right there. So I'm going to go there. And you could choose uh, different themes. And they have a whole bunch of them. And you could sort them and do all that stuff. We are going to use Relax Your Eyes, men. Relax Your Eyes. That's my favorite. So if you like that, you could download it. 
So you'll download this, just click the download button and then download right here and it's gonna download if it all works. And usually you see that in the browser. So I'm just gonna to go to my downloads and we'll see that right here. Unconfirmed download. So maybe it's taking time. Oh, there it is. Relax your eyes. So uh, we'll get rid of those. Bye bye. And uh, and that is going to be the theme that we install. So we could come back to WebStorm and we could go to configure and we could go to import settings right here. And it's gonna say, hey, what do you wanna import? I'm gonna to go to my home directory right there. And then from my home directory, I will go to downloads, which is right there. And I'd want to choose relax your eyes. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do it again. But then I hit OK, and it'll install it, and it'll tell me to restart. And I say, OK, woohoo, all done. The next thing I want to do is, and if you need directions about that, you could go to help, and it gives you those directions again. So when you're here at color-themes.com, help tells you how to install the theme right there. So next thing I want to do is I have a font I like to code in. <laughs> and uh, and I have that font right here for you. It's Bitstream Vera Sans Mono. So if you click that, and then up here you hit this arrow, you could download that. And then once it's downloaded, you uh, just click here, Show in Finder. So I'm going to Show in Finder. And I've downloaded it a couple of times because I've tried to make this video a couple of times and just blown it. So started over so that it would be a clean fast video for you and I don't waste your time and then once we're here Vera 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 whatever mono is the one we want we don't want a talons we don't want bold I don't know what BL is but then we double click that one and we choose install and then that's gonna install it on our computer the process is totally similar for a Mac we could confirm that that has been installed by going to this little search bar down here and searching for fonts Pop and fonts open and then go into Bitstream. And there it is, Bitstream Vera Mono Sans Mono, whatever, that one. And so now that we have our font installed on our computer, we restart WebStorm and we can configure it and we could go into settings. And inside settings, and settings is totally cool. In here in settings, you could search for anything. You could search for line. And then it's gonna filter everything that has to do with lines or you could search for break. Right, everything that has to do with break will come up. Or you can not search for anything and it brings everything up. Here we have colors and fonts. You can see I have relax your eyes as the scheme. For font, I've chosen Bitstream Vera Sans Mono. And if you don't see that, you need to uncheck show only mono space fonts. And then I gotta go back and choose it again, bummer. Or I could just hit cancel. And I made my size 48, big. So when I'm making these videos, uh, it's clear, and I might change that a little bit if we start getting like it's too big or whatever. So that's how you get the theme, the color theme. That's how you get the font. That's how you set up your plugins. Now we're ready to create a new project. I'm going to show you live preview, which rocks the world. So go to create a new project. Choose a location. So I'm just going to put it in right here and call it, uh, you know, oh, I want to create a new folder and call it something or another, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. So it's just a folder and then hit okay. And don't worry about these other ones right here. Just stick with empty project. You don't want any of that other bull crap. <laughs> and hit create. And I'm gonna make my window big. And if you don't see file directory structure on the left, down here in the bottom left corner, all lonely by itself, is this little icon, you can click it, and it'll give you things like, you know, here you have your terminal, your to-do, your project. So I want my project, voila, waha, I've got my project. So for my first project, I'm gonna create a new folder. There's a directory, 001. I like to sequentially do them when I'm just learning stuff. And now inside there, I'll create an HTML file, that's an index, that's the traditional, traditional name for an HTML file is index. So I did that by right clicking and choosing new. First time I chose directory, second time HTML. Sometimes I get going too fast. I just need to slow it down to make sure you know what I'm clicking. Cool, now we have an HTML file and I could create something, right? So I'm creating some text or I could just do lorem and lorem is lorem ipsum, which is made up Latin text. And you just type lorem and hit tab and it filled it out. 
right? So it filled it out with a bunch of lorem text. And then I could, and you could see that wrap is not on. So maybe at the end of the video, I could show you how to go into file settings, which is the same thing and look for wrap. And then I would go in there and I would like, you know, use soft wraps, you know, or look through these until I got to use soft wraps and editor. Okay. Well, I guess I'm showing you right now. Now it's wrapping my text. How cool is that? So now I could preview this and you can see the soft wraps are these little returns right there. They're not real returns. They're like, hey, this was continued from the previous line. Now I can preview this in a web browser. So inside WebStorm, you'll notice up there in the top right, that little icon of the different browsers appears and disappears. As I kind of move over there, it'll show up. If I have the browser installed on my machine, when I click it, it launches this web page in the browser. So I'm going to come over here and now look at the browser. Here's that web page with that lorem ipsum text. I want to copy this URL. So every time you start WebStorm, uh, you, if you want to do this live preview deal, <clears throat> you'll do it for the root of your site. So this is the root of my site, right? And I'll get a URL. And so if I'm working on this page, I, I, uh, I open that page. I live preview it right here. I, I, I just preview it in the browser. I get the URL. So I preview it in the browser. I get the URL. Now I go in here to edit configuration. So under run, edit configurations, I'm going to create a new configuration. So I'll hit the plus sign and it's going to be a JavaScript debug. Even though we're not using JavaScript, this is how you get into live preview in WebStorm. And I'm just going to call this, you know, something, whatever I want, you know, uh, I don't know, Detroit something, whatever you want, doesn't matter. And then control V as in victory for pasting. I paste that URL in that I got when I previewed my web page. I hit apply, okay, right? And now I should be able to go into debug. So I hit the debugger right up here, that little bug. It launches the debugger. This deal shows up. I could just close it down here. This is like the debug console. We don't need it. We're not doing JavaScript. I'm going to make my window a little smaller. It's just a lot of information. I'm just kind of giving you the fast. You could go through this video and repause and pause it and all that stuff. I'm going to put this over on the right. That's my web page. Put that on the left. And uh, it tells me JetBrains IDE Sport is debugging this browser. Oh, and by the way, you need the Chrome JetBrains IDE support extension. So make sure you've installed this extension already. You can see here mine is added to Chrome, but this allows WebStorm made by JetBrains to connect to Chrome. So I've got that installed and I can create stuff. So I could take this out and I delete it and it immediately is showing it's deleted over there. And I could create a div and then I could come here and I could do my CSS right up here in the head like we've learned. And here's my rule set, starts with a selector, and here's my declaration block. And I could do a width of 100 pixels. And I'm just going to hide this window right there with that little icon so I have more room to code. And so there's my width of 100 pixels and my height, height if I could spell, of 100 pixels. And my background color of blue. And, uh, and then and that should have refreshed. I don't know why it didn't, but let's hit debug and just start it again. And there we go. We've got the blue box over there. What happens if I change it to green? So click away and nothing. Uh, again, that should have refreshed. Well, you saw how it worked. You saw how it worked when we were doing the text. So if I have text here, here is some text. Oh, I think I know what I need to do. And then if I change that text, right, you see that text changing. And if I change this, yellow, I've changed the style. There it went. So there's a refresh rate, which you could set in settings somewhere in here. I'm not going to take time to dig around, but there's a refresh rate on the plugins. Those are all the plugins that I have. Maybe I am going to take time to dig around. I always say I'm not going to do it. But somewhere in here with a live preview, so we could do live and search for that, live edit, uh, plugins, debugger, live edit. Here we go, right? Perfect. And highlight current element in browser on create change and uh, manual auto. So I want to auto refresh 
right? Every 300 milliseconds, that sounds good. That's like every third of a second. So now, perfect. And uh, the nice thing about this, and I could change that. So I could go to, uh, well, that might be enough because I could then come over here and I could start doing this. Okay, it's not doing it. I guess I have to choose, choose. There we go, and it shows it over there. So that's live edit. That's one of my favorite things about WebStorm. Adam also does it. But that's how you get WebStorm up and running with my favorite color scheme, Relax Your Eyes, and my favorite font, and getting live edit up and going. So that right there, that video, that's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> I don't know if binary weighs anything. It does when you put it on some media. But uh, getting WebStorm configured like that, that actually took me a while to figure out all those little intricacies and nuances. And that is like, those are the most essential things about getting WebStorm set up, up and running. And uh, it's, it's totally cool. So I hope you enjoy it. I really strongly recommend you use WebStorm. It's what I'm going to be using in this course. And if you're using it, you'll be learning on what I think is one of the two best IDEs for web development, WebStorm or Atom. And if you're using WebStorm, you're going to gain a lot of familiarity with an IDE, an environment, which is, uh, is very similar to Android. So if you ever shift into Android development, you'll feel right at home. The shortcut keys, everything like that will be very similar. One last thing I want to show you about WebStorm is that down here under Help, uh, I know where to find it on the Mac. Let me see if I can find it here. Key map reference. That's what you're looking for. So this gives you a reference. It's good to print out right here and laminate if you can laminate, or make it a big poster, put it on your wall. But this gives you a, a shortcut keys for a lot of cool shortcuts. So I'll be referencing this in this course because I usually work on a Mac. But I'm doing this on Windows, this course on Windows, because so many people use Windows. So I just figured that's a more universal machine for a lot of people who are starting out. So it'll be good to show it on Windows. But I'll be referencing this key map to figure out the shortcut keys in uh, Windows because I'm used to them in Mac. All right, that's WebStorm.